Have you ever obsessed over a math problem, maybe a little bit too much? Something that seems so fascinating and approachable, and yet still so far away? Well, buckle up, because this is a wild journey and potentially a new discovery. But let's start from the beginning. Can you think of any 3D shape or polyhedron where every face shares an edge with all the other faces? Well, of course you can. It's the tetrahedron, right? You have four triangles and each one touches all the other triangles. But are there any more? If you try creating one, it quickly starts to seem impossible. None of the simple shapes work. There always seems to be a pair of faces that don't share an edge, and it seems even less likely to work as the number of faces grows. But what if I told you there is another shape that works, and it has seven hexagonal sides? Can you imagine a shape like that? Well, here it is. It's called the Salazi Polyhedron. It looks way more complicated than you'd expect for such a simple problem, and it's kind of hard to visualize even when you're looking at a picture or a video. So I printed and folded my own, and physically holding it makes you understand it a lot better and really appreciate it. It has seven sides, red, orange, yellow, green, light blue, dark blue, and the little purple one that's kind of hidden over here. The most striking feature you'll notice is that it has a hole in it. So topologically, it's actually a torus or donut shape instead of a sphere, like most shapes you're familiar with. That also means that the famous Euler formula, vertices minus edges plus faces equals two, doesn't work. It actually equals zero for this shape because you have to subtract two for every hole. The Salazi polyhedron is also the shape with the fewest possible sides that forms a topological donut. And since every side shares an edge with all the other sides, it proves that you need at least seven colors to color a torus. And it does turn out to be seven colorable. If you want to make your own paper version, I'll link the cutouts below. It's a little tricky to assemble, but not too bad. And you'll appreciate it a lot more with a physical model. The tetrahedron and the Salazi polyhedron are neighborly in their faces, because every face shares an edge with all the others. But are these the only neighborly polyhedra? Surprisingly, this is still considered an unsolved problem in mathematics. No examples have been found, and there's no consensus if it's likely true or untrue. But if it does exist, it has to have 12 11-sided faces with 44 vertices, 66 edges, and 6 holes. Now this might sound absurd to you. Can you really make a 6-hole donut with only 12 polygons? I mean, with edge graphs like this, how could you ever expect to untangle it in a way that's geometrically solid? If the Salazi polyhedron seemed surprising and barely possible, there's just no way this shape could exist right? But it really piqued my interest, and it's been in the back of my mind for a long time. And it seems so straightforward to test with computer simulation. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I decided to write a solver in Python to see if I could find anything. But where do I even start? I need to know the graph of how the faces are supposed to connect to each other so I can start to look for solutions. After a little googling, I stumbled across this email newsgroup correspondence from 1996, which happened to list the exact data I needed. Super lucky to find that. The next thing to consider is what does it actually mean for a solution to be valid? Well, one thing's for sure. All the faces should be simple flat polygons. That means there's no crossing over allowed in the faces. And also, no degenerate zero length edges, and no 0 degree or 180 degree angles either. Sounds simple enough, and with that, my goal is to find one of these shapes, or at least minimize the number of crossings as much as possible. My first approach was starting with 44 randomly distributed points, and then for each face, repeatedly fitting a plane and projecting the points into it. These simulations took a long time to converge, and most solutions did end up with degenerate faces, 
but I did manage to find some with as few as 24 crossings. It's a start. Then I realized that instead of moving around the vertices, I should be directly generating the planes instead and just get the vertices from their intersections. This was much faster and got rid of the degenerate face problem. So I quickly got it down to just 16 crossings. But just generating random planes and counting the crossings is unlikely to find a global minimum. It's like finding a needle in a 36 dimensional haystack. So the next idea was to turn the crossing number into an objective function and minimize it using derivative free optimization, like the Nelder Mead algorithm. It's a lot slower, but it does produce better results. It dropped the crossing number down to 10, and then 8, and then 7, and 6. It feels so close now. Unfortunately, these minimization algorithms perform best with a mostly continuous objective function. But crossings are very discrete. So I decided to write my own stochastic optimizer instead that's better suited to this specific problem. And it worked really well. As I started tuning it, the crossings fell to four, and then three, and eventually two. Now this was a full-on obsession. The biggest bottleneck now was the speed of the solver. I had to keep my computer running all night just to get a few solutions. So I decided to ditch my terrible Python code and port it directly to highly optimized C++, and that gave me a 25 times speed up over NumPy. And that doesn't even include the new multi-threading possibilities. And in less than an hour, I got one. A zero crossing. Did I do it? What does this crazy six-hold shape look like? Well, the faces being simple polygons isn't enough by itself to be a solution. Because we also don't want the faces to pass through each other. Otherwise, you just end up with a jumbled mess like this and you can't even see the holes. So my journey isn't over. In fact, it's only just beginning. Now I've written some code to check how many edges pass through each face and add all those together to get a total edge intersection number. And somehow I need to find a solution with both zero crossings and zero intersections. And my best solution so far has 23 intersections. Okay but now I can include that in the optimizer and minimize it as much as possible. And it did start to come down. I got to 20 intersections, then 18, 16. I kept trying a bunch of different ways to combine the values in the objective function, and the sum seemed to work best. With more tuning, it was down to 14, and then just 10 intersections. I was leaving the solver running all night, searching and searching. I could feel it, any day now. But that's not how things went. It seemed like no matter what I did or how long I ran the solver, I just couldn't get past the 10 intersections. I actually got a ton of solutions with 10, and when I went to examine them, they were all very similar with only slight stretching differences. It started to seem more and more like this is actually the global minimum if all the best random seeds are ending up in the same place. So maybe that's it, I guess. I was ready to make the video and just end it here. But something just didn't seem right. I was trying to do some more research on it and reread the newsletter again. And that's when I noticed it referring to a polyhedron, not the polyhedron. Could an abstract polyhedron like this be connected in more than one way? After more digging, I found another paper from 1996 that answered my question there's actually 59 distinct manifolds with this neighborly property. And wouldn't you know it, they listed all 59 of them in the paper. But the table was just an image, probably typewritten or something, so I had to run it through an image to text converter to get the final mappings I needed. On one hand, I was really excited because maybe now I can get it lower. But on the other hand, it's now gonna take 59 times longer to generate these solutions. That's several weeks of solver time. Well, there's no turning back now. I had to keep going. And pretty soon, I started finding better solutions. I got it down to nine intersections, then eight, and eventually only six intersections. It turns out that certain manifolds produce better solutions than others. 
and after running the solver for a few days and analyzing all the solutions, I started to see some patterns. Some tended to produce a tangled mess with lots of intersections and seemed unlikely to improve by very much, while others have more intricate patterns, visible holes, and even some noticeable symmetries. I also tried actually enforcing some of the symmetries I saw to make the solutions even nicer, and now I finally got it down to just four intersections. But it seems like I'm running into the same bottleneck again, because no matter which manifold I search, I'm reliably generating the same best solutions over and over and over. But something feels different this time. This four intersection shape might actually be the real minimally intersecting neighborly polyhedron. So without further ado, here it is. I'm calling it the Razor Cross because it reminds me of those utility razors, but if you have a better name for it, let me know. I also decided to 3D print it to get an even better feel for the shape. Now, let me tell you the reasons why I like this particular shape so much. First of all, it's not only minimally intersecting, but it's significantly better than the other symmetric ones, which each have eight edge intersections. Next, it has the highest symmetry of all the solutions, 180 degree rotational symmetry and point reflection symmetry through the center. And because of all the symmetry, there's actually only three unique faces and their reflections, which I call the shark, the piping bag, and the, uh, hmm the pointy-headed duck. The other amazing thing is that all six holes are actually visible. And not only are they visible, but they're line of sight visible, which means you can even look through each one to the other side, or insert six straight rods through the shape without bending them. Topologically, it's as if the wireframe of a tetrahedron has been cut out of the middle of the shape and each of the six edges of the tetrahedron becomes a handle. And due to all these factors, it's actually simple enough that you could theoretically cut it out of paper and assemble it. And that's what I tried to do. The intersections are actually quite minor, and only require a couple small slits on the piping bag to make room for the duck necks. Man, that sounds weird out of context. But actually assembling it with paper turned out to be way too precise and difficult for me, so that's why I just went with the 3D print instead. Lastly, and most importantly, the solution manifold came from group number 42! I mean, Hitchhiker's Guide? Coincidence? But in all seriousness, it really just seems like this is the best shape of all the solutions I've generated. And so, rather than being sad that I couldn't find an intersection-free one, I'm actually glad that the minimal one I did find is such an awesome shape. And even though it's not a proof, heuristically I'm 99% convinced that this is actually the global minimum and the best you can do. It's just very unlikely there's another solution out there, given how thoroughly I've searched and all the patterns I've seen. But wait a minute, what if we didn't care about crossed polygons? Are there any completely intersection-free shapes? The answer is yes. There's three intersection-free manifolds that have the smallest crossing number of just four. Again, they're each highly symmetric with only three unique faces plus reflections. And despite what I said earlier, these are actually much easier to cut out and assemble. You just split the faces at the crossings. But I ended up printing one of them anyway because it was easier and it looks really cool. So is this unsolved problem solved? Well, probably, but without an actual proof, it's hard to say. If anyone's interested in continuing the research, 
I'm posting all of my code and solutions to GitHub, as well as all of the 3D models if you want to try making some yourself. This whole process took so much determination and out-of-the-box thinking, which is what Brilliant, today's sponsor, can help you with. Whether it's learning new skills or just genuinely having fun solving problems, Brilliant's huge range of courses are built for learners of any level, even kids. If the video was interesting to you, check out their geometry course, which is filled with interactive hands-on problem solving that lets you play with the concepts directly, a method proven to make learning six times more effective and fun than just watching videos. Lessons are quick and convenient, so it's easy to learn even if you have just a few minutes a day on your laptop or phone. And it's completely free to try for 30 days, and it can make a great gift for a loved one interested in math. Just remember to use the URL brilliant.org slash codeparade so you'll get the 20% discount if you decide to sign up for the premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant! And if you're still here and want some more awesome math experiences, be sure to check out my two games on Steam, 4D Golf and Hyperbolica, which explore four-dimensional and hyperbolic geometries in a fun, intuitive way. It really supports the channel. Thanks for watching!